Citrix Virtual Desktops, aka VDI on OpenShift Virtualization is what I get to be asked all the time these days. And the good news is that it's finally here. Well, I am running a pre-GA bit, but the GA is right around the corner. Here is the cool part. Want to see how to scale to a thousand Windows 11 VDI VMs on just four OpenShift nodes? Thanks to the incredible hardware I was able to get my hands on, running 5th gen AMD Epic CPU, 6 terabytes of RAM, and 100 gigabyte network connectivity, I was able to pull this off. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and take a look at the architecture first. I got four OpenShift nodes. In my case, I have also decided to make all four nodes to be both controllers and workers. These boxes run single socket AMD Epic 9745, 128 core processor, which perfectly aligned with Red Hat's subscription mode of 128 core per virtualization specific SKU. I am going to need to deploy at minimum three Windows VMs to start with. I've selected Windows 2019 Server for Active Directory and Citrix Desktop Delivery Controller, in short DDC. The third VM is a Windows 11 Golden Image that will be used as a template for the VDI machines. Finally, we need to make some routable network. And at the time of the GA, we'll take advantage of Linux bridge style network. I was told the newer OVN secondary networks will come in a later release, so stay tuned for that. Okay, demo time. Quick look at the hardware from the Red Hat OpenShift console perspective. I should have enough resources for a fairly large VDI farm. I'm going to start with creating a dedicated project. I'm calling my project Citrix VDI. I'm also creating three virtual machines discussed in the diagram. Windows 2019 Server for Active Directory and DHCP, another Windows 2019 Server for Citrix DDC, and finally Windows 11 that will be used as a gold image. Next step was to create a dedicated VLAN-based network, and even though I have started with my favorite OVN-based secondary network, I later realized that it's not something that Citrix supports on day one. I don't think it's a big deal, but to spare you all the fun I had with this, here's the working and supported sample of the Linux bridge. You will need the NNCP and network attachment definition showing on the screen right now. I'm also including the link to my repository in the description below of this video. Then reconfigure all the pre-created VMs to use this new dedicated VLAN network. I also recommend switching the network card model from E1000E to VertIO. In my lab, VertIO provided much better performance. Save the changes and for this to make effect, you can either power cycle the VM or live migrate it to another hypervisor. For me, the next step was to configure the Active Directory server together with DHCP server for the Citrix dedicated network. I assume a lot of you are going to work with existing AD deployment, so I'll go over this section quickly. On Windows 2019 VM, I first set up my static IP and then go into a standard manage add roles wizard. Then select a role based active directory domain service and leave the rest of the options to its default settings. The installation takes quite some time and after you're done with it, there's still a post deployment configuration where you promote your server to a domain controller. Since this is a greenfield deployment, I created a new forest with a root domain name of my choice and followed the rest of the configuration of the default choices. At the end of the step, the VM reboots. Your AD service is up and running. In this build, I've also decided to configure the DHCP server on the Windows AD server. There are at least five other ways to do it, so I'm rewinding this section with the speed of light. Feel free to pause or slow down if you need more details. Even though I have DHCP serving IP addresses to my Citrix VMs, it is recommended that the DDC server runs on a static IP. But this should wrap up all the prerequisites and we're ready for the main meal, installation of a Citrix delivery controller. For that, you need a CVAT ISO file. I was lucky to get my hands on pre-released version. Thank you, Citrix. The CVAT ISO file needs to be mounted in your DDC VM. Mounted ISO has auto select option. Open that and go into the virtual apps and desktops. You want to install the delivery controller. I generally left all the options on the default, which allowed me to install the necessary core components. Pick my VM as delivery controller, select couple extra features and automatically set up my Windows firewall. 
After you press the install button, the VM will start installation, but later VM will reboot multiple times. This part is a bit tricky. After the VM comes back up, you need to remount the CVAT ISO file and either let the installer continue if you're quick enough or guide the installer back to the mounted ISO. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This step took close to 30 minutes to complete on my environment. So have patience. After the installation is complete, the Citrix site manager will open where you want to select deliver applications and desktop for users. Pick your site name, let the software set up databases and apply your Citrix license. That is the part I did not have and decided on the 30 days trial instead, which worked fine for me. Few more minutes of waiting and ta-da! You can log in to Citrix Studio and that's the place where magic happens. Next up is creating a golden image that will be used for our VDI users. As you might remember, I have selected Windows 11 for that. So after logging into my pre-created VM, I mount the same CVAD ISO that has been used on DDC server, but this time virtual agent for Windows single session OS is being selected. In the installation menu, I chose create a master MSC image and not selected any additional software components. Then I tested the connection to my delivery controller, left additional features unchecked and got to the option to automatically configure the Windows firewall ports. Finally, I hit the install button and let the process complete installation. By the end of this process, the Golden Image VM has restarted. We are ready to connect Citrix controller to OpenShift virtualization and scale out that Windows 11 image, but we also want to do it securely. So first let's create a service account, Citrix VDI, and define its roles and role bindings. In my case, I'm creating two roles, CVAD machine creation that will be limited for just the desired namespace and second CVAD watcher role that has a cluster-wide read-only capabilities. Please check out the Git repository included in the description of this video for the most updated version of the needed roles. I also need a token associated with my service accounts that will be used to authenticate the Citrix controller to my OpenShift platform. So I'm creating a secret for that. Now let's switch to my DDC virtual machine and open Citrix Web Studio. We need to add new hosting connection. From the connection type, select Red Hat OpenShift, inject your OpenShift API address and use the service token generated in the previous step. The zone should be primary and put the clever name for your connection. If you get the certificate warning, it is a good sign that indicates the connection has been attempted. Select Trust Certificate. In the next screen, select the namespace that has been defined for this work, pick your desired storage backend, as well as pre-created network. Finally, confirm your choices by selecting Finish button. If everything went right, congratulations, you're now connected to your OpenShift. All right, it's a go time. Let's turn our Windows 11 into consumable desktop machines. For that, let's get back to Citrix Studio and create a machine catalog. As a machine type, let's do single session OS, enable power management and either use the VM statically or dynamically. Next, select the master image and in our case, it's Windows 11 golden image. Make sure you shut the VM down before getting into the next step. Adjust the size of the newly created machines to your liking, select Active Directory to automatically create new computer accounts and specify a naming scheme, including hash signs at the end for the VM numbering. Enter admin credentials to your active directory and finally name your machine catalog. And you're ready now to launch this rocket ship into space. You can watch the VDI VM getting created in OpenShift Virtualization Console. OpenShift will create a few disks and other temporary objects, but at the end will provide a VM that is managed by Citrix software. Once that is done, you can test power management capabilities to ensure things are running properly. Creating one Citrix VDI VM is kind of boring. Let's turn this up a notch. How about 1000 Windows 11 VMs? No problem. It's a smooth sailing from here. Select the machine catalog and add the virtual machine, then sit back and enjoy the VM counter going up. It's very calming. Do you feel rejuvenated? I know I do, but fun doesn't end here. I need to show you one more thing. Well, we need to provide the web interface to our end users to consume those Windows workstations. 
And for that, we're going to deploy Storefront, which comes in the same CVAD ISO file we use for our Golden Image VDA and DDC. After the installer is complete and reboots the VM again, you need to create new deployment. Then match your URL with the machine that you've deployed Storefront into. The store name is a free form and under sites add the DDC controller. I left the rest of the options to the default, which worked fine for me. Finally, you want to create a delivery group in Citrix Studio and attach it to the just created storefront. This will expose the machine catalog, including our Windows 11 to the end users. That should be it for making our VMs available to end users. Let's verify. I'm going to log into Storefront Web UI as a normal AD user, then select desktops and look at that! My Windows 11 desktop is available for me to use. Let's see if I can log in. And that is a full success. And there you have it. 1000 Windows 11 VDIs running flawlessly on OpenShift virtualization using just four powerful AMD Epic servers. From deployment to user access, we've seen how powerful and scalable this solution can be. The amazing Citrix VDI is here and it's powered by OpenShift. I hope this video has been helpful and thanks for watching.